Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick uh, dropping on, dropping in on you. Uh, look, I uh, hope that everybody has had a great week, man. We already done knocked this one out. It's been a mad crazy one, a tough one with me. Uh, just with everything that's going on over the last few months, uh, it's been a, a little rough emotionally uh, with the loss of moms and, you know, the anniversary of the loss of my brother last year at this time uh, and a bunch of other things it's just been kind of crazy but we, we're getting through it uh, we're making progress we are waking up every day and answering the bell that's the important thing um, life happens uh, as the saying goes life be life and, uh, and it doesn't give you a break because you think you aren't ready or you don't have uh, your bearings. You've got to take it and find a way to roll with it and keep going. Uh, I thank God for all the love and support from those people who have been consistently checking on me, those who uh, have me in their thoughts and their prayers and may never have said anything. I feel your energy. Look, you know the routine. If you like what you hear or see on this channel, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. If you believe in the work that I, myself, and the people at the Odyssey Project are doing and have done for more than 30 years in our community, uh, show some love and support and donate. I cannot stress that enough. Um, and I'm not going to get into it because it's something that shouldn't have to be uh, pushed. Either you believe in what I'm doing or you don't. If you believe in what I'm doing, show some love. If not, I get it and I understand. No problem. Uh, everything isn't for everybody. Uh, but here's here's what I want to talk to you about today. I was sitting up and I was talking to uh, some very sharp uh, brothers on last night. Uh, talking about some things that we need to do and uh, while and the beautiful thing about this conversation is I'm talking about brothers who are by every definition of the word successful uh, men who are handling their business in their homes in their careers in finance in social mobility and social responsibility. Uh, and yet we were all able to put our egos aside and say we have a problem and that black men are where we need to start. It starts with us. Uh, it's a hard thing to get men who are on their grind and doing things the way it should be to accept responsibility collectively about some things that are going right. But we all understand and our conversation uh, revealed that we understood last night that it the change has to start with those who understand. The change has to start with those who have the capacity. The change has to start with those who are willing to sit up and lead others and show others and teach others and set the example for others. Uh, and one of the things that, one of the points that I made last night is one of the reasons it's so difficult to move the, uh, the meter on black progress is because those of us who are in positions of success and who have gained a little uh, ground and have some things to show for our genius. I believe everybody has a genius. I think some of us have found a way to uh, exploit our genius for the sake of getting us some things that provide us with a certain level of comfort uh, and access. Uh, but the problem is that that comfort and access. I think that a great deal of those of us who have experienced success, the idea of going all out in an area that puts targets on our backs and starts to close doors that we've 
worked hard to open puts us in a place where we will sort of sit back and be comfortable. That's never been my approach and that's why I have to work three times as hard as the average person to have the things that I've been able to do because I will not quench my passion for my people. I will not quiet my voice. I will not tone down my speech. Um, and it costs me with clients. It costs me with certain opportunities to walk into certain situations when it comes to business. And I have a choice. The moment that I accept the compromise, okay, I'll tone it down a little bit. Just let me at your table. My integrity is compromised as well. I have sacrificed a position and place for my people in order to make things more comfortable for myself. I would rather stand, fight, and drive, and push, and go to war than to sit up and say, man, look what I'm driving, look where I'm living, look at all the things I've done. Uh, and I've, I've had an unbelievable life. I, I've done all of that, but I've never had to sell my people to do it. And I found that none of that stuff actually really matters. Uh, not that you shouldn't have wealth, not that you shouldn't have power, but all the chasing of things is how they get us. And as long as things are driving us, we will toss people and, 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 and promise and potential and, and so much else that we can literally cultivate underneath the uh, bus. I have over the 30 years that I've been doing this, 30 plus years I've been doing this, I've conducted research into multi-generational trauma uh, that extended into epigenetics and uh, that extended into adverse childhood experiences and that cult culminated in an understanding of our traumatic environments and our health and how much of our health, negative health outcomes are tied to our stressful environments uh, as children and adults. I've written on it, I've lectured on it, I've traveled uh, to countries. Uh, I've lectured at the Epigenetics Conference on Cancer. Um, and I have uh, done research on the use of policies and codes and practices to stifle the, the, the thirst and the quest and the pursuit of generational wealth uh, and how that plays out. I've uh, written about it in my book, The War on Black Wealth. I have written about it in Born in Captivity. I have lectured on it. I have created courses uh, that my brothers and sisters can take that will show them what to look out for, but also show them what uh, they need to do and the way they need to think, the way they need to practice, the mindsets they need to develop. I have uh, studied uh, the importance of the purposeful this destruction and disintegration of the black family nucleus and how that's playing out in our outcomes as we move through time. I have given and given and given and I have pushed and I have pushed and I have pushed and to sit with other men and challenge them to do the same and to know that we are literally a decision away from really truly doing something radical and revolutionary. And that decision is going to require that we make ourselves uncomfortable. This discomfort is necessary for us to achieve the level of freedom and liberation we want. We're going to have to be willing to be uncomfortable. We're going to have to be willing to, to let go of some of the conveniences and uh, privileges and comforts we, we literally covet as a part of the structure. We're gonna to have to let go of the idea of being a part of something that does not serve us well over the long haul or does not serve us well as a collective. We are going to have to let go of the idea that my, 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 my uh, 
definition of success is to be able to look at my brothers and sisters and say, y'all wish y'all was me. I said this a long time ago and I meant it then and I mean it even more now. As long as I remain an anomaly, as long as I remain an abstract idea and an exception, I have failed at my job as a black man, as a leader, as a representation of what should be. And it is my responsibility to do something uh, beyond what I'm doing to change that. And that is my goal. That is my aspiration. That is my desire. I am striving uh, to be the best version of myself each and every day. And my challenge to you is that we need to do it as a unit. We need to rise and literally make a choice, a decision to do something completely different than what we've been doing and do it consistently.